Welcome folks, this is TC Freeman with WingsOfFun.com and we're starting a new venture here. I get to say our first guest for our podcast is my first interviewee, that is. So, <laughs> we have Marty Smith here, who I've had a pleasure of flying with over the years, and he is a professional aerial photographer. Uh, who incidentally just retired? Yes, I did. <laughs> despite his early years, so. <laughs> Marty, how did you get involved with this crazy business? Well, first I was, you know, photographer for the school paper in high school. I was a yearbook photographer. Then actually went to Chowan College, which is now Chowan University, and got a degree in photography and started my own studio. But as they say, self-employed, you have no benefits. And everybody was saying state government. And technically, I had a photo degree, but never had heard of photogrammetry before. And so I had an opportunity to become a technician, photo technician, to work in the dark room for photogrammetry at DOT. And once I got there, I was very interested in flying and it took about a year and I did my first mission and 20 some years later, I still still love it. <laughs> so Char Chowan College, where's that at? That's in Murfreesboro, North Carolina. Murfreesboro, so yeah. your degree was in? in photography. Okay, so nothing about aerial? No, nothing. nothing. Actually, whenever I was doing studio, some studio stuff, I'd work with lawyers. And I would get into, you know, 152 or 172 and lean out the window. And I've got still <laughs> some old photos of where I did my first aerial mission. But um, I don't like leaning out of windows of an airplane. <laughs> I like the, the camera being mounted in the floor and everything being safe. So Right. So a lot of the folks that are listening are, are probably the what you say hobbyist where they want to go out and take pictures of their own homes and vacation homes and pretty pretty sunsets or what have you so they m might be the open your window variety there right and there's nothing wrong with that true tell us about the technology because i don't know if people are really familiar with how sophisticated photography has come well people people don't realize that you know nc dot is broke down into 26 you know, departments and photogrammetry is in the pre-construction department. And photogrammetry is the science of plotting and mapping the earth with aerial photography. So basically we're measuring the contour of the earth. And as I tell people, there's usually a white arrow either painted on the road or beside the road on a back, black piece of plastic. And that is a reference point for us. And when we're flying, we're using our now digital camera, and we are basically doing a stereo overlapping of photography. And in that stereo overlapping, we create a 3D image and basically measure the contour of the Earth. Somebody explain that to me. Like, you take kind of a picture at an angle just before. It's, where a, you... it's a 60% overlap. 60%. Right. Okay. You take multiple pictures and you kind of get a... Uh, one image that's a three-dimensional, I right. guess would be a simplistic way. It's sort of like I'd say about a radio. You know, if you had one speaker, you got mono. If you've got two speakers, you've got stereo. The same way with a photography. If you overlap the two, two photos, then in that overlapping part is stereo, which creates where we can build the 3D model. What's the advantage of having 3D models and stereo and all that? What do you, what do, you do? Well, basically it? in pre-construction, we're, we're the first ones to go in to map an area for a construction project, you know, from Manio to Murphy is our office. Well, basically, when we measure the contour of the earth, we are helping contractors. And when we, a road, a road cannot be built all, as people know, with the delays and everything, that a construction project can last from either a year to up to four or five years. And a contractor can't wait till the end of the project to get paid. So what we do is we fly and map the area so we know how it exists, unearth and then when we come in we'll fly after he's done all the cutout we'll we'll map it again and then pay him then when he's done his earthwork we map it then we pay him because we can measure how it was to what it is now so we know how many cubic tons of dirt he's moved and it goes from earthwork to asphalt to gutter to culverts and everything to its till the final section and then the, the job is finished I have to imagine that has to be pretty rewarding for to be able to kind of go to bat for the taxpayer, you know. And, <laughs> well, you you 
you see an end result that actually you use. I mean, you know, if you're up in in north of Asheville and you see I Interstate 26 up at Mars mm-hmm. Hill, you know, I think you went on a few of those trips. Uh, yeah, we've got a little story <laughs> about looking up at watchtowers. Well, that's a different yes. story. Anyway. But um, but you see the end result, and you see it go from nothing to something, mm-hmm. and it 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 is rewarding. And you know, when you're out on the coast and We've worked on the new Oregon Inlet Bridge for many, many years, and I'm, as I now, being retired, will not see that, but it'll be good to know that one day that, that I did work on that project. So. Wow, that's neat. Now, uh, probably, uh, let me uh, go back a little, the technology in the airplane, you know, you were shooting film. Uh, if we have any young people, it's that <laughs> stuff that used to come in these little cans. It's my alarm. Like, anyway, uh, so... we. You were shooting film, but then the navigation, uh, how, how, I mean, because avionics has just gone just crazy over the last 20 years. I, I would imagine yes. it'd be the same in photography. It has, because we basically, our negative was a nine inch square negative, and our rolls came in 500 feet. And we did infrared, we did color, and we did black and white. But, you know, back in the, in the 2000s, everything went digital, and we went to a high-resolution digital camera. Which, if I'm if I'm remembering correctly, it was um, 272 megapixel, and for that. And you know, a lot of people, you know, film has faded out. And with the technology, we went from using Loran for navigation, which updated every 30 seconds, to to now using GPS and the GLONASS, which is the Russian satellites, and um, which updates every like half second. So the navigation part has just become so much easier, and the measurements have become so much more precise. Cool, cool. All right, well, what about things that are outside of just regular photography for roads is uh, what, what kind of things do you do there? Well, one thing about photogrammetry is there's only two of us that actually do the aerial photography. and But we're also sort of known as the first responders. If you have a hurricane on the coast or if you have a rock slide on Interstate 40 in the mountains, we're pretty much the first ones to be out there within 24 to 48 hours. The governor would really wants to access the damage visually. So we're out there like I said, as soon as possible, as soon as weather clears or something. And, you know, especially on the coast, you want the hurricane to be gone before you get out there because, but between the temporary bridge out at Rodanthe or P Island um, to new inlets that's formed at Buxton to, like I said, the rock slide, he wants to see immediate coverage of what the damage has done. And it's pretty cool to, you're, you're the first one to go out there and you're, you're helping everybody, especially the governor. So yeah, you're having to deal with uh, TFRs, temporary flight restrictions, and yes, you are. And you know, we fly through the MOAs, and you know, we have to coordinate with military a lot because um, in the world of aviation and in the state of North Carolina, we are known as Roadrunner Two. So when we talk with the military, if we say Roadrunner Two, then they know we're state government, and hopefully that gives us a little special edge to get stuff done and it has in the past especially with Camp Lejeune and all the restricted areas so but it, it's it's been a very cool and great career so we're, we were talking about how the Roadrunner too if you're out there a lot of our folks are sport aviators uh, what th- kind of things should you be aware of from a safety standpoint well I would think is if you're ever flying and you hear that somebody's doing aerial photo obviously know that they are not flying the usual aviation standard. Um, we are flying what just per scale, which because we are we're is strictly for measurement only. And so as I tell people that I talk to, we're a one way street, but we're going the wrong way. So if, like it's, um, we're restricted category, so we have to coordinate with the military. We have to coordinate with the traffic control. So they know exactly where we're going to be in the sky at all time. But to the general aviation that's just maybe on a weekend, because we fly seven days a week compared, you know, for the weather. And if you hear that there's an air photo, you know, plane out there, just a little bit, you know, more cautious because he's not, 
He's not flying per. He's flying strictly for scale. So non-cardinal at uh, altitudes. Yes, and exactly, exactly. Okay, so I could be flying eastbound at my 5,500 feet uh, and, altitude VFR, and then somebody becoming west, westbound at the same yes, altitude. Definitely. There okay. We are. Yeah, and one thing I noticed is, you know, I, I think it's important to for all pilots no matter if you're you know hanging the camera out of the window or to our operation i noticed you took a lot of great time of sitting down with the map and the charts and saying okay here's our job this is what we're doing and it's a real methodical kind of process which i i think folks out there should hopefully mimic yeah well one thing um we have an office in southeast raleigh that's for photogrammetry but you know we were at the dot hangar at rdu um, all the time and one of the first things we do is we come in and coordinate with the pilots and let them know so they'll have a heads up and of where we need to be and what you know altitude what how many flight lines and pretty much everything that the mission details so they can look at the traffic controlled areas and contact them and it, it is a team effort and the pilot is is a major major you know control of the of the whole operation because it's up to him to realize between the safety and concerns to the weather to you know dealing with traffic control because sometimes they don't want us in there because we are flying different you know for, you know altitudes so mm -hmm. but the um, pilot pilot is a very very important role well you're being very humble because I think it's a team <laughs> effort you know I mean you have to to work the weird the interesting thing I remember is when I was flying some and I think the first officer is very important personally but <laughs> <laughs> all right that's the role I play but basically you know you're you're having to shoot a succession of shots so once you're kind of established it's very difficult just to say oh we'll go back and pick up the third shot of 20 you know it doesn't quite work that way and um, you, you know the other thing is you really do have to have that that cockpit professionalism because you know you have to say you know you're like the maestro what what's coming up next and then they the pilot has it logged in on their GPS and they're kind of basically flying the equivalent of like an ILS approach I mean it takes constantly a lot of concentration and then you know my role in the right seat was to communicate on the radio with ATC and pay attention to what's coming up next here and then looking out for traffic that's uh, kind of a biggie one thing about it is um, our computer system has two monitors and one I have pretty much a laptop and the pilot has a has a um, monitor on his yoke or it could be situated wherever visually it would help him but he is watching everything that I'm punching in and we've had jobs where we're flying for the topographic maps that left from the Virginia state line all the way to the South Carolina state line so you're looking at some flight lines that could be over a hundred and some miles long wow. and so that's why I say it's very important for the whole team and he's I'd say as jokingly that we're we're basically running a very very sophisticated um, Xbox or Wii because <laughs> basically he keeps the airplane on a certain flight line and as long as he's there the cameras firing automatic and um, I'm just recording data for the young bucks out there that are looking to get into aviation and considering this might be a cool career you can get paid to play video games true <laughs> <laughs> very much uh, uh, wrap this up but i was just thinking are there any interesting stories i mean i can remember a, a, a couple of uh, good ones there and i'm sure you've got some as much as you've flown over the years well you know i think one mission that you flew on some was it was called um a10 and that was the interstate 26 project north of mars hill well when we first went up there we didn't realize the scale or the, the mountains were as tall as they were, and they actually had some watch towers for the um, forestry division on some of these um, mountains too. And you know, if you notice, they don't build, unless it's the Blue Ridge Parkway, they don't build many roads on top of mountains. So we had to dive down into valleys and you know do the photography. Well, the joke was when we landed in Asheville and after that first mission, that, I mean, we were basically buzzing treetops. And one of the pilots got back and he said he was never doing that mission again because we stopped squirrels from 
having fun <laughs> and that's being very very nice thank you and, but um but yeah after we went back to raleigh and explained everything they raised the scale and so many years they actually built the and i know this is different but they actually built the dump trucks on site they were moving so many million cubic tons of rock for that project so, so it, it took about it took a flight once a month for I know three to four years. So it was a very important job and a lot of investment to the point where they had to, I think, pay that contractor on a on a much uh, accelerated basis, a little at a time. Exactly. So they could you know meet that, that expenses. But. but but yeah, we've you know we've flown like I said, Manio to Murphy, and I've seen the state of North Carolina in many many ways. I mean, there's times where you've flown out of Raleigh Durham, and it's one of these crystal clear skies with low humidity and you look back and you can see the mountain range and as you climb a little higher you can also see the outline of the outer banks and it realizes that God's creation is a small creation because of how how little this earth is to see both at the same time yeah yeah I, well I commend you for the work you've done uh, for the state and all these years and I mean, it's really an important job. And I'll have to say, that low-level flying, we do have a waiver <laughs> from the FAA, incidentally, to fly lower. It was just, we would have preferred it to be a little higher, all of us in the, in the airplane especially. But uh, anyway, so, well, Marty, I, I sure appreciate you taking the time well, to thank you. be in our first interview. And, uh, <laughs> and your great work that you've done for the state, because I, I think it is rewarding to know that, hey, folks pay their hard-earned money to to pay for the state's assets and you're out there you know watching out for it really well thank you and i want to do a you know quick shout out because you know of course you tom and you know from corby to the art johnson to ron ron dupont dennis smith terry carlisle i mean those guys at department of transportation you know some of them were commerce and everything combined but those guys are the best and like I said, it's a team effort, and there were never once when flying with them that I thought our safety was, you know, jeopardized. These guys are professionals, and I think they, they need a great shout-out, too. So. Oh, that's awesome. All right, well, one last thing, and we'll let you go, is if somebody has a question about aerial photography or just thought this was a cool uh, podcast and wants to get up with you, is there like an email address? That, uh... Yeah, it's pretty easy. Um, it's love, L-O-V-E. The number two, fly, F L Y N C, at gmail.com. Oh, cool email. Yeah, I love to fly in C. Because <laughs> for many years, and I'll still love to fly in C. Oh, that's great. Well, thanks again, Marty. And uh, this is TC Freeman signing off with wingsoffun.com. We'll see you next week for our second podcast. Mm -hmm.